Hey, welcome back to Bridal Sewing Techniques. And today I'm going to show you how to take in this corset top wedding gown three different ways. There's the quick and easy way that requires minimal sewing skills and is very affordable. There is a moderately easy way that really isn't very difficult at all. And then there is the more extensive way. It's advanced sewing. It takes a little bit longer and I'll show you how to alter the dress as it should be done on a professional level and of course that would be the most expensive well the fun part is the bride tried on this dress altered all three ways and she was able to vote on her personal choice for the most comfortable the least comfortable and the one that looked the prettiest and the results were surprising i can't wait to tell you some of you have asked me before for more details about how I do prep the gowns and get them open for alterations. So I am showing almost the complete process here for you to see that. No need to be scared. If you're afraid, don't forget how to put it back together. Just take pictures as you go. But I'm going to open it up first at the kind of the underarm area, the top of the bodice, and then I open up the waist. Now I'm going to work my way up the side seams of the bodice. On this dress, the lining is just seamed together with a normal straight stitch like normal. And um, then when we get to the inside, you'll see how that boning is put in just a little bit differently from what we see in the gowns that have a solid bodice. You can tell this is a semi-sheer illusion bodice, corset style. It has the clear flexible plastic boning, that silicone elastic trim. I now have the outer part of the bodice completely independent from that lining organza layer. And this is the moderate version, actually. We're gonna start with the middle of the road here. And instead of disassembling any of that outer corset layer, I'm just gonna go ahead and sew straight down the amount that we need to take it in. So if I pinch the sides and I pinch an inch, I'm gonna sew an inch. I'm tunneling my fingers up there to make sure that I have the lace out of the way as I'm sewing. I don't want to catch any of the lace in the seam and we have peeled the lace away regardless of the sewing level that you're going to choose for this alteration it's not hard to peel it away and it's not hard to hand sew it back down it's just a little time consuming i'm actually just going to put a dart through the layers of the skirt here i just made sure the side seams on the outside were all aligned now i'm sewing the skirt waist to the waist of the bodice again this is the moderate way so I did not have to disassemble the corset part of the gown at all I'm gonna fold that forward and I'm just showing you how I would lay that organza down and the silicone elastic down and hand stitch it closed I'll show you how to do that later now this is the easy way I'm just going to fold this over and tab it. We just call it a tab, T-A-B. Tab it in all the way down. Now I want you to notice to the left of my presser foot is that piece of boning. So I am not putting the seam in at the true side seam. It's slightly behind it. So I'm butting up this new seam right along the side of that piece of boning so that boning is still visible and pretty. The first step that I did, the first method that was moderate, it's eliminating the look of the boning just at the side seam. It's everywhere else on the bodice. And this one, you can see I'm sewing right through that waist and I'm coming down to dart into the skirt, just tapering that right off. I just sewed right through everything except for the lace. So I'm going to roll that forward and you're still going to see that boning there. 
and I'm going to cover that new seam that I put in there that really doesn't belong according to design. I'm going to cover it with lace and at the top where the step is instead of having to taper it I'm going to cover that step down with lace as well. It actually you'll see it in the end you'll see the end result of all of these um, partially closed off with the lace. It's actually very, very convincing. It's kind of funny. But you saw how fast this was and that any almost really a beginner skill level could probably sew that just fine. Now here is what the moderate one looks like from the side, how we've lost the look of the boning, but that's okay. It will be covered with lace. Now this is the one that was actually easy. And look at how prominent that boning still looks. You will still see that nice ridge there, even though we're going to cover the seam with the lace. Now, this is the legitimate side. This is how it should actually look. This is with the lace peeled away, of course, so that you can see the structure of the gown. But I'm getting ready to show you that. I'll show you every step of the way so that you can do it that way if you wish. And then we'll tell you in the end which method was the favorite of the bride. Now I'm showing you that mesh casing on the inside and then right now I'm showing you on the outside how it's kind of, it's got a top stitch and a seam on the outside that gives you that nice ridge, that bump that shows where the boning is. This is after I have opened up that mesh casing that the boning was in. We're going to have to completely remove that. And that little bit right there by my left thumb, that lighter bit of mesh, that is actually the seam allowance of the side seam. So there's a very little seam allowance and it's hidden uh, right under that boning. And that's what allows the bodice to maintain that level of transparency. Let's just pick that casing away. I'm going very careful with my razor. It allows me to be very, very precise. I prefer this to a seam ripper, but you do whatever works for you. There's that casing. It's a narrow little piece, isn't it? All right, so now this is the side seam of the bodice. I'm going to sew where I'm taking it in, that folded inch, so it's really like bringing it in two inches for the bride. I'm going to go down that whole side. We're not going to cut that piece out and leave her with no allowance. We're just going to fold it back just like that. So it's laying nice and flush and flexible. And it will be there if anyone ever needs to let this gown out in the future. Ideally, when we do alterations, we try to not remove any fabric that is not necessary to remove. Now I'm gonna sew this casing piece down. I splay it open and I'm sewing right down that ditch and it is stacked right over that seam, that new seam that I just put in there at the sides. I'm gonna go all the way down and this just forms the little tunnel that um, that flexible boning goes into. And so I'm going to lay that left side over, pull it taut as I sew, and I'm going to sew that down right at the very edge. And this is just a little bit wider than it should be in the end. I'll show you how to get it that like impossibly narrow look that you see them sew this uh, casing and top stitch with. But we've got to make the casing to put the boning in first, or at least that's the easiest way for me to do it that I've found. Here's our moment of truth. We're going to put that in there and it's a pretty close fit. Like I was saying, we were sewing it in pretty close, but we can get it a little bit closer. And I'm going to show you how you do that next step. 
So um, remember that step down that we had on the other side when we did it the cheater way? I'm just going to fold that down. And we're going to have to do some hand stitching here. I would do this hand stitching for both the moderate and advanced versions of this alteration. Remember the easy version just went clear through all of the layers, um, but for both the moderate and the advanced, we're going to go ahead and put this step down tucked inside between the layers. And then we are going to close up that organza lining and hand stitch that. I can just do a nice big solid whip stitch in here because it's going to be between the layers. No one's gonna see it. We're just going for security and neatness. But the beauty of the stitches do not matter at all right here. I always like to knot things off at least three times. And I'm just securing this down with pins, but you'll see as I hand sew this together, I'm going to kind of finesse the fabrics together. Make sure they're laying flat with no puckers. And I do just basically overlap them. Now I get asked about this a lot. How do I sew my silicone elastic? This is my preferred way. Sometimes I do machine sew it, but to get right on this edge and to be able to really get it to be shaped exactly as I want, it's a little tricky. So I prefer hand stitching for it. And same here, I just overlap that silicone elastic. If you really want a nice touch, you can take some lining lace and with very little stitches cover over that little junction there that would look very nice and would prevent the silicone from irritating her so i'm going to do a little hidden stitch here this is where the distance that i need to go is covered between the layers and I just come up for air for a little bitty stitch on the outside. See how small that is? And then go my distance between the layers and then have a little bitty stitch. I'm going to do that and like I said, finesse the overlap, make sure nothing's pucker puckering. I'm gonna do that all the way down until I get to the waist seam. Now here's from the outside how you can see that bit there is just a little bit wider than what we would like. You can also see it's gonna be covered by lace. But let me show you how I would get that boning squeezed in there super tight with that top stitch. I'm changing the foot on my machine. Instead of having the left right zipper foot i'm just going to have the one side of the zipper foot that allows me to get the needle immediately up against the boning so i'm pushing the boning on the inside of that tunnel all the way to the left and i'm pushing that presser foot against the boning so i get that channel nice and tight if i needed to tighten that channel all the way down to the waist I would have made this adjustment before I closed up the lining but since it was just the top bit um, this top stitch is actually working as a nice stabilizer mm -hmm. for the gown so I just went through all the layers and I'm showing you how I'll be placing the lace now let's hear the bride's scores and ranking. They will all be scored on comfort, beauty, and value. For the easy one, she gave 4 out of 5 for comfort, 4 out of 5 for beauty, and value was 5 out of 5. For the moderate version of the alteration, she thought it looked just fine. It laid very smooth and it was going to be covered with lace anyways. So she said three out of five for comfort. Beauty was 
three out of five. It's not quite as pretty without the lace. And the value was four out of five. And for the most advanced alteration, here we still have a little bit of the lace peeled away, so you can see the detail of that. She scored it a 5 out of 5 for comfort, 5 out of 5 for beauty, but a 3 out of 5 for value. When comparing the price difference between the advanced alteration and the easiest one, she did not feel like it would be worth it. So although the scores turned out that the most advanced alteration and the easiest method were a tie, if she really had to choose, guess which one won? That's right. It's crazy. But she preferred the easiest method. It looked beautiful. It felt great. And it was super affordable. That was quite a surprise, wasn't it? Thank you for joining me. Hit subscribe. Welcome to the community. And please watch this next video. YouTube knows you're going to love it.